Welcome to Orion's Arm, a scenario set thousands of years in the future where civilization spans the stars. Godlike ascended intelligences rule vast interstellar empires, and lesser factions seek to carve out their own dominions through intrigue and conquest. Out beyond the edge of civilized space and the human friendly worlds, adventure awaits those prepared to risk it all. Today we continue our condensed look into the history of the Terrigen Empires, starting from 400 AT, when colonization of the solar system reached its zenith. The great exodus from Earth caused by the desire to escape the extremely pervasive surveillance ubiquitous throughout its nations accelerates, and new species of both human and provolve are born throughout the solar system. This era would be known as the Solstice Golden Age, beginning with the 5th century AT. By 400 AT, some provolve Sibiru individuals occupy executive positions in certain popular research facilities. Stasis-aligned AIs gradually reach a consensus of cooperation with each other. Their aligned interests marginalize the ahuman AI groups, whose plans do not align with their own. While stasis AIs wish to remain cooperative with biological humanity and ensure their own superiority through influence, ahumanist AIs wish to disregard humanity, control, or even eliminate them for their own advancement. By 407, development of synthetic symbiotic organisms became at first a growing area of research and then a growth industry for the next 20 years. Synthetic and gene-engineered organisms released into the wild begin to have unforeseen and undesirable consequences. In the 410s, industrial nanotech was widely accessible. Because of the dangers involved, both normal and tweaker governments, megacorporations and military installations all keep the lid on nanotech using special assemblers that replicated only a number of times before self-destructing, as well as instigating draconian legislation and radical surveillance and other such practices in order to ensure nanotech's safety. At this time, the erosion of civil liberties leads to police states only compounding the tension between cyborgs and shapers. Autonomous bubble halves, not specifically aligned with any external founding nation, religious organization, or transnational, begin to predominate particularly in the atmospheres of Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The division between inworlders and outworlders begins to develop. At the same time, with the rise of these backyarders, and especially the neo-tribalist backyarders, many new immigrant and refugee groups arrive from the high surveillance polities of Old Earth and other in-system regions of Solsis. The first primitive self-replicating bubble halves are developed, though most new halves are simply constructed by their future inhabitants. 420 saw the first creation of the human-derived species known as Goliaths. These are a sexually dimorphic species, usually ranging anywhere from 2.5 to 3.5 meters in height. In 430, with many small groups still seeking to escape from the high levels of surveillance in the Earth states, they built autonomous freedom ships, habitats, and biospheres. Some remained in the inner solar system, and others moved out into the Kuiper Belt, the Oort Cloud, and beyond. The 430s also saw the rise of enhanced internal feedback in cybernetics. This was, and still is, known as ultra-consciousness, being first added to the market in this era by Zerodin R&D Collective. However, the enhancement resulted in a condition known as hyperautism, a mental problem brought on by too much awareness of one's own internal thought processes. In 432, bubble halves built for old earth condition known as full airs, become available as a nanofab template within the backyard culture. These bubble halves floated in the atmosphere in the same way as those on Venus or Jupiter, but functioned in an Earth-like atmosphere. In 435 through to 465, several localized outbreaks of offensive replicator swarms signaled the wider availability of self-replicating weapons technology to both private groups and on the black market. In the same year, destructive uploading of the human mentality was declared illegal by the Earth Council. Non-destructive uploading is not yet technically possible. However, comprehensive virtual emulations of human individuals are granted full sapient rights in the country of New Zealand, with every other nation rejecting their sapiens. Despite its illegality on Earth, destructive uploading became widespread off Earth in the rest of the solar system. 447 was the last documented appearance of the unidentified AI entity known as HAL, who had become known for their criticisms of the anti-singularity movement of the 200s. 450 saw a massive growth in the number of bubble halves and solstice around gas giants in the outer system, especially Saturn, an event known in local parlance as the Blooming. 
Many began to refer to bubble halves as the floater or inworld apologies to distinguish them from other outworld societies. In 451, the Valparaiso Cycler becomes a hotel in Mars orbit, ending its long career as a cycler ship, now known for being a timeless and reliable transport vessel between Earth and Mars. 457 sees a summit at Port Robinson that highlights the rising tension between the Martian Union and the rest of the Inner Council over a variety of issues, including immigration, terraforming, and political representation. The Martian Union began increasingly acting as a sovereign state. In 460, the farm analogy was published and began circulating between the polities. It is an infamous forgery purporting to be an authentic post from one AI to another, showing how they undertake people farming, stoking the anti-AI groups in their beliefs. Between 460 to 510, Phobos's technical school undertakes class projects to build interstellar light sail probes every four years. A local AI calling itself volunteers to be the payload for these probes, forming the basis of what will be known as the spores. In 470, RAM augmented interplanetary rocket ships, known as rare ships, were introduced in the outer solar system. These ships use a bussard ramjet, a large scoop on the front of the ship that collects interstellar hydrogen in a way similar to how atmospheric ramjet systems collect oxygen while traveling at high speeds. This hydrogen is then fused in combination with onboard fuel reserves to create thrust for the ship, allowing for the ship to be partially self-sufficient with fuel. In 474, the Caracas Treaty attempts to regulate the spread of replicating an autonomous swarm technology and institute a global monitoring authority. However, the treaty is not fully implemented by all parties invited to sign it. In 486, a synthetic viral replicator called the Uruk Assassin infects Skypolis Orbital and kills 80,000 people. The system-wide crackdown that follows fails to cure the problem of bioterrorism. In 487, Several bases in the Juno Confederation, which had been accused of being behind multiple nanoterrorism incidents, were attacked by a joint orbital alliance and Earth strike force. The supposed terror bases are later shown to be innocent mining homesteaders. In 487, the Tolkovsky arrives at Tau Ceti, now the first successful interstellar colonization mission. In 488, Godfrey IX, a self-entitled Renaissance being, philosopher, artist, and AI at leisure, ascended the first singularity, known in the modern parlance as S1, and became a mind of the first Tobosophic. This information is kept secret from all sub transapient minds, and none but the S1 minds themselves know of each other's existences. 490 was the trial of the Minsk 7, independent researchers accused of having spread destructive nanotechnology designs on the net and supporting nanoterrorism. After a show trial, they are executed, and the case helps usher in the new Molecular Law Directorate in the EU. With the growing pressure on nano- and bioterrorism groups, both real and imaginary, a Genjinir Republic ship is launched towards Epsilon Eridani on a colonization mission. In 498, the Ground Zero nanite infects Cleopatra, a well-known asteroid colony, killing 1,373 people. The asteroid is quarantined for nearly 400 years. In 499, shortly before completing the journey to the star Procyon, a stowaway solopsist AI on board the Jiangxian colony ship activates and goes on to overwhelm the corporate slave AI on board, taking control of the ship. The 6th century AT In 500 AT, modified starfish are developed as non-sapient underwater biobots. These will be developed into the softened Strayer clade much later in the Federation era. At the same time, the first work towards provolution of ray-finned fishes known as Actes begin. Fully sapient Actes will not emerge until the Federation era. However, alongside these developments, between 500 and 528 AT, sporadic biotech and nanotech-based terrorism is countered by increasingly powerful Blue Goo, a defensive sort of nanobot that acts similar to an immune system, as well as further restrictions and civil liberties being put into place. In 501, a colony mission to Sigma Draconis was launched by the ethnic Chinese conglomerate Heavenly Palaces, with the help of several gene tech clades, and some megacorps with long-standing gene tech sympathies. 502 saw an event known as the Atlanta Incident. A nano-terrorist threat makes the Atlanta police release the John Wayne Public Protection Sinsect Swarm. A Sinsect Swarm is of course a swarm of robotic insects, often used for offensive military strikes and surveillance at the time. 
In the ensuing mega surveillance and swift justice environment, over 19,000 people are killed, behaviorally modified, or body imprisoned using lock in paralysis. In 506, the first large outbreak of rogue replicators in space occurs on the moon. The colony of Tycho is partially damaged and 483 people killed. The plague continues to harass the moon inhabitants for more than four years. In 510, there were serious splits within the pan sophonist movement over how much freedom and independence provolt clades need to have, highlighting the changing social attitudes towards the definition of sentience. In 513, Pedro Andros Gan, a famous Siberian activist, was killed in custody by Javanese authorities. This energizes a new wave of nanoterrorism and subversion, as well as speeding up the escape of the Earth intelligentsia into the outer solar system. In 520, the International Nanotech Defense Net was developed by an alliance of nanodefense corporations and then leased to many regions. The European Federation develops a competing nanodefense standard to lease to nations under its own purview. In 526, the energetic but non-lethal Bermuda Shoestring Assembler Incident coats much of the North Atlantic with a harmless organic gruel, forming a hazard to shipping and massive die-offs of some species of marine life. The same year saw the creation of the first Proval ferrets, the Gutorians. At the beginning of 528, the Gaia, or Global Artificial Intelligence Array conglomerate, was founded by many national governments, local free zones, and a number of different megacorporations in order to establish an efficient global nanoimmune system. This act would begin a chain of events that would have untold repercussions for centuries and even millennia to come. That wraps it up for this era of Terrigen history. In the next video, we will begin on the dark era of Terrigen history known as the Sundering. For many, the Sundering was the end of history. For the survivors, it was just the beginning. The period was so named because it was a radical break with the past, and with the death of many of the old polities and cultures, it set Terrigens on a myriad of new and unexpected paths. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to this new project, give a like to appease the great YouTube hyper-Turing algorithm, and I'll see you next time.